Hey everyone, Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. So welcome to the amp rack skeleton video. So you've came up with a design for your amp rack. Uh, you've collected all your materials and tools. The next step is building a skeleton for it. So let's start with the basics. First thing you want to do is start with a nice clean slate in your vehicle. Go ahead and pull everything out of the trunk. Uh, if you're going to build above the spare tire, you can leave that in. But in my case, I chose to remove it because I'm going to be putting my amps in that location. Now. Once you've got your clean slate, the next thing you want to do is build your baseboard. So what is a baseboard? A baseboard is basically the piece of wood that you're going to mount everything on for like a foundation. So in this case, since I'm mounting my amps in the amp rack, or my amps in the spare tire well, my baseboard is actually above where the amps are going to sit. So I made a nice template shape around the uh, spare tire wheel well, and basically, uh, mounted that piece to the floorboards of the vehicle. So the next step is to make a mounting system for your amplifiers. So in my case I just used some MDF and through pretty basic fabrication techniques just made it so that they were angled towards each other and I just painted everything so that it would look nice and last longer. So the next thing you need is to make a series of templates. You need something for your fiberglass material to stretch from, from the edge of the baseboard to the fiberglass templates. So, in order to learn how to make the fiberglass templates, you need to actually watch my template series. The link is on your screen. Once you have all your fiberglass templates made, then you're going to want to basically put everything together. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of body filler magic um, and how I can actually smooth out different templates on my baseboard by using body filler. I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit of shrinking templates down again, uh, just so that you can get a nice chamfered edge, and I'm going to show you guys chamfering um, the template material as well. So stay tuned in, watch the rest of the video, and you're going to learn how to build the foundation of your amp rack, the skeleton. Now that I've made some good progress on making my skeleton, I want to show you guys a little trick I use um, to make a ring around your insert piece um, and basically how I shrink it down and add a nice chamfer so that I can actually have two of these on top of each other. One will have the uh, fiberglass mesh brought up to it and the other one's going to be actual trim ring that will trim ring rather that will sit over a piece of plexiglass. So let's tune in and let's see how I take this panel and I add a nice chamfer to it and also shrink another panel that will be on top of it at that same chamfer so I have to do very minimal uh, body filler work. Okay now first just to bring you up to speed you can see I have my insert piece here and uh, using some of the techniques that I've shown you guys in the template series uh, episodes 1, 2, 3, and 4 um, you can basically do the same thing where you fill in the gap with body filler so that you have a nice perfect transition. So what I'm going to do real quick um, is going to take this big piece here and I'm actually going to transfer it. Since this is just my, uh, my template making template, I'm just going to transfer it to a clean nice piece of half inch MDF. Okay, so you can see I've made my tracing. I'm just going to cut it out quick with the jigsaw. Okay guys, so you can see I have the outside rough trimmed out, and what I've done is you actually want to save the line. And the reason for that is I'm going to use the panel I've already made to flush trim this with my router table. Now I want to show you guys a quick little trick. Um, obviously I need to cut out the inside of this as well, so I drill the hole here. And the trick is, you want to cut one way first. So I've already cut this way. Now what I've done is I've taken my jigsaw and I've flipped it around so I can cut back this way instead of just starting in the hole because by cutting back this way I can really come in close here and cut off this little nib rather than leaving it for the uh, router table that I have to chew through. Alright so I've got my pieces sandwiched together and you can see the small amount of lip that I'm going to have to actually take off with the router table on the inside and on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Okay, so now I've got my nice copy of that template. 
What I'm going to do is go ahead and separate them. Like so. There you go. Nice copy of the template. Alright, now here you can see the nice perfect transition that I've created for this insert piece to sit down into. Now what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to show the steps because it's basically the same thing I just did, but I'm going to take this template and I'm going to make a copy of it on 3 4 inch thick MDF. Okay, now what we're going to do, since I have my 3 quarter inch thick copy of this template shape, what I'm going to do is take my chamfer bit and I'm going to run it trying to get out of the shadow here, but I'm going to run it along the 3 quarter inch piece and completely chamfer the half inch piece. And the reason I'm going to do that, the half inch piece is going to be what's sitting on top of the baseboard inside the trunk. So that's going to start my transition chamfer up. And I want to do that before I shrink the 3 quarter inch down. That way I have something for this bearing to actually ride against. Okay, so you can see I have this nice chamfer on my half inch piece. Now what I want to do is I'm going to separate uh, the three quarter inch piece because it's thick enough that I can allow the bearing to ride on a little bit of it. And what I'm going to actually do first is I'm going to downsize um, the three fourths inch thick piece a little bit uh, with this rabbiting bit. I have my rabbiting bit set up so that the bearing to the tip of the flute is about half an inch. Kind of hard to see right here. Let me just set up my ruler a little bit better. See right here. It's about half an inch. So what I'm going to do is run this around um, making a little step that's a half inch in and then I'm going to remove it with the flush trim bit. So let's do the first step, rabbiting it out. Okay, so now I have my nice rabbited step. So now what I can do is take my flush trim bit here and I'll be able to actually run it, the bearing against this surface here, thus trimming this down evenly. Okay, so now you can see that we've shrunk the 3 4 inch piece down. And what I'm going to do next is take my chamfer bit and I'm going to chamfer this top piece. Okay, now you can see we have a nice smooth transition. What I'm going to do is simply mount this in the trunk and then I am going to fill this gap with Bondo. So let's get it mounted. Okay, so now you can see that I've got my two pieces mounted here. And the reason for that chamfer is now when I spread my body filler on, I have a nice, easy transition to fill. Now you can see I'm using Rage Gold. Rage Gold is definitely my favorite body filler um, for the reason that this stuff sands amazingly. Uh, it's super easy to sand. If anyone ever tells you that they made a fiberglass box in their car and they would never do it again, it's because they didn't use Rage Gold. Rage Gold will save you a ton of time, a ton of effort, and although it's a little bit more pricey, uh, this runs about $54 a gallon, it's definitely worth it in all the time that you're going to save. You can see I just get a pool going, put a nice line across, and I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. Make sure the camera's recording, of course. Now I've kind of learned there's a good pattern for mixing this. Just go back and forth like so, kind of like an S shape, and then smooth it out. Smooth it out. And what you're going to want to do, what's nice about Rage Gold, 
is uh, the filler itself is like a yellow color and the hardener is a blue color. So you know it's mixed effectively when you get this nice kind of olive green color that you see I'm getting right now. So make sure it's real nice and mixed. Um, the reason I'm mixing it on cardboard instead of like an onion board is it's not like I'm going to be painting this, so I'm not real particularly concerned with any pinholes or anything like that. So, I mean, if you're a body worker guy, you know right now you're like, hey, you're doing it all wrong because you're mixing it on cardboard and you're losing the resin, but um, for me it doesn't really matter right now. Alright, so now that I got it nice and mixed, I'm going to do get a little bit here. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of fill in this gap. Make sure you can see that on the camera. So I got this gap filled in. Once you fill in a gap like that, you're just going to want to take your card, kind of run it along like that. See how nice and smooth that is? That's going to be easy for me to sand because I took the time to make these templates correctly. Just going to run my card along the bottom here so I don't have to worry about sanding any of this garbage. So, I can't say it enough, taking the time in this body filler step to really make sure that things are nice and smooth, it's just gonna, it's just gonna save you a ton, 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 ton of time. Got a little bit on my table here. All right, you can see I've got some more done here. And what you're gonna wanna do, once it starts hardening up on you, just start getting these little clumps that you don't wanna take the time to sand off. You might even want to grab, I'm going to grab a new card real quick. Now just so you guys know, I have like a plethora of these fake credit card things because I used to travel a lot and I save them from the hotels. So just a little quick tip, these work great as spreaders and they're free. So if you guys are going to hotels and stuff, definitely uh, pick them up, you know. Alright guys, now while we're waiting for that to dry, I want to show you guys the templates that I've made for the amps. Now this is also going to be part of your skeleton, and if you're not familiar with how to make these templates, once again, review my template series videos. So basically, we're going to have an insert for each one that will be wrapped in suede, and this piece is what's going to bond to the piece that sits inside of this here. That's what I'm going to stretch my fabric between. So, you guys need to stay tuned in because in the next episode, I'm going to show you guys a trick using the rabbiting router bit, where basically you make a notch, just like is on this piece here, and it gives you a nice little wedge to staple the fabric. So in the next episode, you can expect to see the skeleton back into the car, and basically we are going to start stretching our fabric and fiberglassing.